haunted houses. Now, we see movies, uh, we see articles and documentaries being done concerning houses that are claimed to be haunted. I've prayed personally for people as well who experience certain phenomenon, per paranormal activity in their houses, especially in the places where somebody committed suicide, where a murder happened or blood sacrifice was offered, or if you bought a particular house and there were things that were done that opened the doors to demons and opened the doors to demonic realm through different activities. These things are real. Sometimes, you know, people discredit them and they say, oh, you're just making things up. But there are people that experience that and maybe you're one of them. Or today, maybe you want to learn how to clean your house spiritually, which we're going to go through five simple steps that you can do to clean your house spiritually. I'm a huge believer in dedicating everything that I come in contact with to the Lord. Whether it's my car, whether it's my, my house that I live in, to dedicate it to the Lord so it belongs to God. Maybe you're experiencing something that's standing, you know, in the room. Perhaps, you know, doors that are kind of swinging and stuff is moving. Or perhaps these nightmares. Sometimes there are houses where people have these crazy nightmares. Before they moved into that house, no nightmares whatsoever. Or there are places where the spirit of divorce is there because people in that house were divorced. I know personally people who went into, moved into a house and then they got divorced, the person before them got divorced, the person before them got divorced. It's like this curse is on that house and it can be broken through the power of Jesus Christ. So here are a few things that I want you to consider. Number one is, are you a Christian? Are you a believer? Maybe you stumbled upon this video and you are not a believer in Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Because if you're not a believer, you have to understand one thing is that the Bible says that you're living already under influence of demonic spirits. And so it's completely possible that these demons have access to your life through these objects. Actually, it's one of the ways that they attack people the way demons, unclean spirits attack people, if they cannot gain some kind of a control in you, they torment people through things that they own like cars, objects and even animals. And so the first thing that you must do is you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. You need to give everything that has to do with, to Jesus. Not just Sunday morning. I'm not talking about that you just prayed a prayer at summer camp long time ago. I'm not talking about that you went and you did the communion uh, once a month. I'm talking about living your life that is fully devoted to Jesus Christ. And so give your life to Jesus. Number two, if you are not the first person who occupied the house, the trailer or the apartment or whatever you are living in, who lived there before? Are you aware of any acts of violence, murder or suicide that happened there? Were the people who lived before, were they practicing a cult? Sometimes it's difficult to find out the, the history of that place but usually neighbors and sometimes honestly just pulling out the, the background of that place and going and checking with the city you know if there's any liens on that place you can come to a very quick realization hey that there was stuff happening there and that gives you information that you need so that you can go and do a spiritual warfare it doesn't mean that you don't buy that place or you don't live in that place it just means you will need to cleanse that place so the history of that place a lot of times holds the keys to why that place is being haunted and why that place is being attacked i remember one of the me and my wife we bought our first property uh, together it was a duplex it was a rundown duplex and when we bought it one side of that duplex because duplex is two sides one side of the duplex was fully remodeled and it seemed like it was in a great condition the other one was broken down in fact not only broken down it had this broken glass windows it had no heater no ac it was like a rundown place the moment we bought it and we started kind of going through it the neighbors came out and so i asked the neighbors i said hey can you tell us about people who live there and they're like this was actually a very known drug place this is where they made drugs this is where they sold drugs like everyone in this neighborhood knew this is place where you get drugs and so we rented out the good side to um, some people and then the bad side we took it to remodel it and before we started to remodel i brought anointing oil 
I brought anointing water, anything with the word anointing on it, okay, from the men and women of God that I know and I trusted. And I sprayed that place down. And then of course we use a lot of chlorine and some other stuff and we repainted the whole place. I, we prayed for that place. I went to every single room and I just dedicated that to the Lord and I told the devil, listen, this is not your place. This is a place where miracles are going to happen. This is the place where people will be saved. This is the place where people will be healed. This is the place where we will have life groups. We will have leadership meetings. We will sleep peacefully here. We will have intimacy here we will have we will make money here we, it will be a great place not a place of sickness death and nightmares and so I want to encourage you to know the history of the place that you have especially if you can find out that history and this doesn't just apply to houses it can also apply to cars like for example if you remember in the Bible in the story when Joshua cursed Jericho and he said that the guy he said whoever's going to try to rebuild that city will rebuild it and then he pretty much pronounces a doom on these builders, the king or the prince who will try to rebuild Jericho. And he says that your firstborn and your lastborn is going to die if you're going to try to rebuild that city. And guess what happened? Hundreds of years later, some kind of a guy, uh, you know, goes in to rebuild Jericho and he doesn't do the proper investigation. He doesn't pro do a proper research on that place. Now I understand it probably wasn't easy but honestly that prophecy was very known. It was spoken by one of the great leaders of Israel. It wasn't hard to find that out and look what happens to this guy. His oldest son dies suddenly. His younger son dies suddenly upon the completion of the city of Jericho. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't a coincidence. It was a direct result of that place what was, was cursed. It had a curse hanging over that place and so I just want to challenge you if you are living in the place if you are driving a car you know be a person that is not oblivious and ignorant of the history of that place I, I'm not saying that you start digging up every single thing that you can and you spend years doing that but the Lord is good he's gonna guide you to the proper information just ask questions of the person that's selling it ask the neighbors and that will hold the key so that you can go into the spiritual world and break the curses, break the spiritual connection to that place in Jesus' name. Number three is clean the house. Now that means to throw anything that could attract demonic spirits. Examples could be honestly pornography, uh, all kinds of idols, non-Christian religious art, um, voodoo paintings, um, all kinds of Masonic uh, paintings, occultic books, satanic Bible, all kinds of new age stuff like crystals, sacred stones, um, um, Ouija boards and dream catchers. So like anything that has to or is connected to pagan beliefs. Now I'm talking about now people who are experiencing you know something in their house that is haunted or they feel like something is watching over them or something is hurting them or tormenting them or maybe your children are being under attack. Um, you know find the history of the house. First of all give your life to Christ. Secondly find the history of the house and number three is uh, just with the Holy Spirit go through the stuff in your house and get rid of things that are uh, attracting demons. You know I remember hearing the story of Derek Prince when he was struggling financially at one time and as he was praying in his living room he's he's looking at his the wall of his living room and he sees two paintings of these um, snakes like these dragons. Now he wasn't just seeing that in the spirit. There were actually paintings passed on to him from his grandfathers who went to China. I think they fought in China or something like that and it was this was like a very very uh, valuable art because of what it signified and it's been passed on from generation to generation. And he's looking at these paintings and it's like these snakes, these like these animals are looking right at him from these paintings and the Holy Spirit gives him prompting and he said um, you know these things are not <laughs> holy, uh, these things are evil and you need to get rid of them and he starts to justify that. He's like no I mean this is like you know this is just a painting and da 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 and so but he really felt like the Lord led him to throw that away. When he threw that away he said within a year the income quadrupled. He says just things changed in his finances and he really felt that those, those paintings were holding back 
the prosperity that the Lord had for him. Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy. He comes to kill joy. He comes to steal peace. He comes to steal finances. He's not an author that gives. And so if you have items in your house that need to be thrown away, I know a lot of times people in Western cult cultures are so open-minded, their brains are falling out. They're accepting all of the charms, bringing all of the garbage into their house, spiritual, all kinds of, you know, little things that they found in another city. They went to some kind of a mission trip or they went to another country and they went to this, you know, little cute shop and they found these really nice things that's supposed to bring good luck and they're supposed to bring a blessing and if you wash yourself with this soap you're going to be prosperous and if you uh, wear this this little uh, beads you know that you're going to attract good spirits my friend all of that is garbage all of that has demons behind it and so get rid of all of that get rid of things that are not pure throw stuff out if you want the devil not to have access it's kind of like you know if you keep putting food out you know, you're going to attract mice. If you want to stop attracting mice, stop putting food out. Throw it in the garbage can. And so don't put the food out because you will attract mice. Don't put the sweets out because you're going to attract um, ants. And so the same thing happens. If you have these things, you attract demons. If you want to stop attracting demons to your place, you need to clean your place up. Number four is go through the house with the holy anointing oil. Start with the furthest part of the house you know, let's say a basement or a second floor. And you have to understand that demons are supernatural beings. And when they enter a particular place or material world, sometimes they bind themselves to our physical realities. And so I would encourage you to go through the opening of your house and the closing of your house. So like anoint the windows of the house anoint the doors, the top of the doors of your house, um, anoint the front door, anoint the, the, the door, you know, the exit door to your backyard or something, anoint the door and command anything that's evil that is connected to that property to leave by the authority of the name of Jesus. Now it's good to have somebody who will come to pray with you but as a believer you have the authority. Like it, there's nothing wrong with bringing your pastor or bringing your a mentor but you're a Christian. You got the power of the Holy Ghost in you and so take the anointing oil and anoint the windows, anoint the doors, the front door, the back door and just, just de dedicate the place to, to the Lord and rebuke any unclean spirit that might have had access to that place whether willfully through um, your sin or perhaps unknowingly through your sin or maybe somebody before you lived in that place and opened the door to demons. And so rebuke that, cancel the assignment, rip that contract that the devil has to that property and invite the Holy Spirit and His peace. And number five, you can also walk on your property which you know sits on uh, four corners and pray for the property. So for example go on the furthest part of your property on one corner, go on the furthest part of the other corner and then go on all the pretty much outskirts of your property and also just drop a little bit of oil and just dedicate that place. You have to understand is that in the old times people associated even pagans associated deities that deities would link themselves to a particular location, to a particular place. And we see that in different portions of the scripture. Even Israel, the God of Israel, you know, he would be lived everywhere, yet he would dwell in the tent, then he would dwell in the tabernacle, he would dwell in the temple. We would see that they would have these places where God would dwell in. And so spirits, spiritual realm can be connected to a particular place. And if you don't believe in me, if you don't believe in what I'm saying, you're like, oh, all this stuff is garbage. He's just charismatic. He's just coming up with all this stuff. I mean, why is that when you come into the church, a lot of times you experience this peace? Why is that there are places you go to and there's this heaviness that comes on you? Why? Because there's these places that they're open and they have a frequent visitation of these spiritual beings, whether it's demonic or whether it's um, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit's power. And so dedicate your whole property, not just the house, but your whole property to the Lord by anointing with oil and canceling every assignment that the enemy has had to your property in Jesus name. I pray God's blessing over your house. I pray God's blessing over your property and I pray, pray God's blessing over your family in Jesus name.